I really do love cameras, and I do have quite a bit of them, not just in this Home Assistant setup, but also in some other setups. Also, a lot of the cameras are sitting in a drawer. So when Rowling approached me and asked if I want to replace my current 410 camera that I have also from Rowling with the 811A or 811A camera, I said sure, why not? Because I was really looking forward to play with a couple of functionality and see how they play with the Home Assistant. Today we will be looking at Reolink RLC 811A camera and the integration inside Home Assistant with some advanced features. We'll start in a couple of seconds. Full disclosure, this camera was sent to me without any purchase or payment from me towards the Reolink in order to record videos and play with it. So I got this camera free of charge. While there was no financial transaction between Reolink and me, either them paying me or me paying them, yes, this camera was sent free of charge. About a year ago, I already made a video about the Reolink cameras, actually two. One was featuring the cameras, how they work, how do you set them up, and the second one we talked about the installation or integration inside Home Assistant. While not a lot of things have did change in the last year in terms of integration of Home Assistant, the HACS component that we will be using today to integrate Reolink has really improved. And it also brought up the functionality to be the same or au pair with the current functionality of Reolink cameras. And yes, before anybody else says it, of course, you can hook up Reolink cameras, not just to NVR or network video recorder from the Reolink, but you can also hook them up directly to Home Assistant by using some of the integrations. One of the most popular would be, of course, ONVIF or ONVIF integration. But we are not going to use that. As mentioned in my previous video, I will be using a Reolink HSCS component. But let's first have a look at this camera. I do apologize for the quality of this image, but I have reduced the quality of the image to save up the space on the Synology surveillance station. And yes, this camera is also hooked up to Synology surveillance station. Let me briefly tell you a bit about my setup. Each and every camera I add to my home assistant is always hooked up also to Synology surveillance station. Well, first of all, it is directly hooked up there. So I set up everything there and then I add two integrations to Home Assistant. First integration, of course, is direct Synology integration in Home Assistant, where I pull that information by using the Synology integration. The second setup is, of course, if I can, direct connection between Home Assistant and the camera. Sure, it does make two cameras, but I like to have it in two separate streams, so if, for example, my surveillance station also fails, I would have direct connection. But if my surveillance station is working, that will be the primary source for events or triggers for my home assistant. Maybe not in case of 811A camera, because here we can leverage the HACS component. User interface for Reolink hasn't changed. Here we have option to control zoom and focus. In the basic settings, we have on-screen display where you can name the camera, but you can also toggle it off, position the name of the camera, allow or disable date and timestamp, with also ability to change the position. For me, this is upper and lower right. Then we have advanced settings, anti-flicker, day-night, infrared lights, and of course, video clip settings. Most of the other things are located inside the settings menu. Here you have option to flip display, mirror display, which is especially good if, for example, you mount your cameras upside down. Here you can also set up the camera name and date and time, allow or disable watermark. If you allow watermark on the image from the camera, you will see watermark or logo from Reolink. Anti-flicker, day and night, and privacy mask. Privacy mask is good if you want to disable or not see part of the image, which is, as it says, privacy mask. Advanced settings allow you to control brightness, contrast, saturation, and sharpness, and black and white and color switching threshold. This camera does allow you to record video during the night in a color, but you do lose some quality of the image and you can see ghosting. And depending on this threshold, you can play with the threshold and switch between the black and white and color image for the night. Color day mode, black white, color night mode. 
then we have ability to control or select stream. It is recommended that if you are using the latest firmware, and I do suggest that you update to the latest firmware with one big note. The latest firmware currently, as of the time of the recording of this video, still has issues with the HACS component. Fixed frame rate, which is available in the latest firmware, is recommended for the ONVIF integration. You can select your resolution, frame rate, maximum bitrate, in frame space for the clear and also for the fluent type of the image. In Home Assistant, I'm pulling this fluent string. Alarm settings allow you to tweak out or work with the detection alarm. I have enabled pad detection, sensitivity for both motion detection, which allows you to set up specific time frame and the sensitivity for that time frame, and for the smart detection, which can be used to detect people, vehicle, and pets. These settings still here are the factory settings. I haven't played with them. Alarm delay for the people, vehicles and pets, and object size. For the object size, I have left it as is or the factory settings. You can also set up the detection zone. It will then allow you to select the area where you want to have this advanced detection analysis available. Remember that yes, you can do it on the whole image or the whole stream, but this does put a bit of strain on the camera. I have never tested with everything enabled, so I always just select the area where I want to have this detection enabled. Audio and light allow you to play with the audio and light settings. Do you want to record audio? Volume, you can test the volume of the camera. Do you want to have ER lights on or off? I've set it on the auto. And one of the great functionalities of this camera is that it has a very bright spotlight. And when I say really bright spotlight, I really do mean really, really bright spotlight. Because of that, I reduced it to 50%. I have enabled it in night mode and I have also enabled it to be triggered by the people and the pets or persons and pets. Information will give you standard information about the camera, including what is the latest version of the firmware. And I'm using the latest firmware, which is 3.1.0. And the version that came pre-installed was 3.0.0. Surveillance allows you to set up everything related to surveillance. You can enable record, overwrite, pre-motion record, post-motion record. But those functionalities are done or handled, in my case, with the surveillance station inside Synology. Schedule allows you to set up specific schedule for any motion, person, vehicle, pet, for the specific dates and times, or days and times. Email will send you email alerts. FTP will upload the image or the recording to the specific URL or FTP server. Siren is great functionality and this is something that I really like and it's great that it can be used also in Home Assistant. And then we also have push notification if you are using the application. Network setup allows you to set up the network settings and I'm using, of course, fixed IP address for this. I don't have any SD card in the camera, so I don't have any options for this storage. And system, of course, allows you to create new users, to see which user is located from what IP address, set up date time, and do maintenance. And maintenance, of course, is two things. First thing is to upgrade the firmware, which I used once to upgrade to the latest firmware. But also, I like to have this setup, auto reboot. Each and every of my cameras, no matter if they are Rolling, Delink, or something like that, are set up to be rebooted once a week at random times. So, no two cameras should reboot at the same time. Yeah. Okay, so we did talk about what options you have if you are using the UI of the camera. But let's jump to the Rolling web page and look at the other specs, like maximum resolution, frames per second, etc. This Rolling camera usually sells at around 150 euros. Currently, you can buy it 13 euros off for 132 euros. Specifics of the camera are, it's a 4K camera, it has person, vehicle and pet alerts, it has optical zoom, built-in siren and two-way audio. This image that shows the spotlight, unfortunately, doesn't suit it very well, because this light is really much brighter. I have one light source on my balcony, and it's around 7 or 11 watts of LED power. This is much brighter than that standard LED. 811 means that the camera is 8 megapixel. And yes, it does have really nice and clear view, but as I said, 
I have reduced the resolution just to make things easier for both Home Assistant and my Synology surveillance station, although Synology shouldn't have any issues with that. I don't know if you know, but I never heard previously about the Keen company, and the Keen company is a subdivision of Relink. They are now releasing, I think, the first line of cameras, or first camera, from the Keen division, and this is Trail Camera, 360 pan tilt camera, that also works via GSM network, 4G. While officially we do not have a pricing for this camera, from the information I got, I think that camera should be around 350 US dollars or around 400 -ish euros in Europe. But of course, the pricing can change. And for all of you that are interested in 360 GSM camera, I will be posting a link to this new website in the description of the video. And the release of the camera should be before the month's end. But let's look at integrations. First thing I will cover is very briefly surveillance station inside Synology. It is very easy to add the camera, you just have to edit and then select the camera type. And yes, this camera is automatically supported or detected inside surveillance station, so it knows all the functionality of the camera itself. For me, what I normally do is I take over some of the actions from the camera and do it on the surveillance station. For the event detection, I do them on the surveillance station. Unfortunately, you can select either H264 or 265, and there are pros and cons with each one of them. If you select 264, this is Stream 2, the resolution of the camera is 640 by 360. If you would opt out for 265, then you have option of using the higher quality stream. But that also can bring some of the issues in Home Assistant, so that's why I'm using this 640 by 360. One additional thing I have between my surveillance station and Home Assistant, I use webhooks. In the information panel, I have Balkan Motion triggered interruptible. On the event, I'm using this interval, which means that there shouldn't be any two events in less or more frequent than 10 seconds. This camera is triggered based on the motion detection. And the action for this is we call specific webhook. Method is post, this is content type, interval, and then I also take a snapshot. So I call the webhook on Home Assistant, which triggers then the camera automation on Home Assistant, and I also save that snapshot. Those snapshots that are saved can later on be used by myself to tweak up the detection part of the surveillance station. And schedule, of course, allows you to play with the schedule for this rule. For me, it's always on. So that's why I say I have always two options. Surveillance station, if it detects motion the camera, calls a webhook. But we also have, as I mentioned, the other option and that's the integration inside Home Assistant. For the integration inside Home Assistant, I'm using this Relink IP camera HACS component. By default, this custom integration is not inside the HACS. In order for you to edit, you have to copy this link here inside the custom repositories in HACS. And if you are planning to buy a railing camera, or if you have railing cameras, this is definitely the integration that you should add. It creates some additional services, such as railing, set sensitivity, set backlight, set day night, and also PTZ control. What it also allows you, it allows you to pull some additional things out of your camera. For example, ER lights, record audio, push notifications, recording, or in case of this 811A camera, you also get the ability to distinguish between motion detection, people person detection, vehicle detection, pet detection, and you can also trigger from within Home Assistant the siren. Yes, and I really do like that bit. Let's go to Home Assistant. If you haven't previously added any custom integration or custom component inside HACS, press on three dots, custom repositories, Paste the URL that you copied previously, select category integration and add. I myself cannot edit because it's already here in my HACS. After you restore your HACS integration, like always, you have to restart your Home Assistant. After that, go to settings, integrations, add integration and type Rowling and you can add a Rowling IP camera. All you have to do is specify the host, port and the username and password for the camera. While we are on the enable HTTPS flag, I really would recommend that you do not use this flag internally. It can mess up a lot of things. 
By default, version 3.1 of the firmware of Reolink camera now implements and starts with the HTTPS. If you want to disable it, you can do that inside configuration. In Network Settings, Advanced, you have option to enable or set up HTTPS. Of course, here you can set up the port settings. The ports are media port is 9000, we have RTMP or RTSP port, you can enable or disable HTTP and HTTPS. And as you can see, I have disabled HTTPS and enabled HTTP. You have also option to enable RTSP and ONVIF. When you add your Reolink camera or 8118 to your home assistant, you will see one device. But this device will also give you a lot of options and entities. Some of the things that I like with this integration is that you get not just the stream, so camera dot whatever name you gave it, but we also have ability to see, and yes, you can use that as triggers inside Home Assistant, motion, person detected, pet detected, and vehicle detected. You can control the ER lights, you can play with the siren, and the siren is a really nice feature that I like a lot, and I will be using it for my Alarmo integration or HSCS integration inside Home Assistant. Spotlight allows you to turn on and off Spotlight from within Home Assistant, enable or disable push notification, record audio, recording, camera, etc. So what are some of the cases or what are some of the automations that you can use this camera with Home Assistant? If you do not want to buy NVR from the Reolink or don't want to use separate, I don't know, MotionEye, Freegate or Facebox like the one that I'm using, you can use this simple functionality or advanced functionality of the camera to get notified if person is detected in front of your front door. So you can use this person detect to trigger something if there is a movement or person inside your front door. Or you can use this vehicle detect to detect if the car is approaching your gate or something like that. And pet detect, you can see if your pet is in your backyard or not. I did say that a couple of times, but I really do like railing cameras. I think that they are very price competitive. Of course, there are cameras without that advanced functionality that costs less. And of course, you can use four megapixel cameras too, because they will give you good enough quality for most of the things that you want to do with them. But if you are looking for a camera with more functionality inside itself, without the necessary burden of additional or add-ons, you can go for this camera. But yes, you can also use this camera with Frigate, MotionEye and Facebox. And I am not using Frigate or MotionEye, I am using Facebox. What Facebox is, it's a free, limited functionality, but free application that runs inside the Docker container that allows you to do face recognition. It will look through the image, search for a face, and then compare it with the model that is stored locally. And it works perfectly, and it works also with this camera. There are a lot of cameras that you can buy on the market, but I myself, if I would buy a camera, I would definitely opt out for Reolink. There are some cheaper ones, but don't be cheap like me and buy four cameras from China for $30, because at the end you will get what you pay for, or you will not get what you didn't pay for. This is it for this Home Assistant how-to with Bearded Tinker. I really do hope that you did enjoy this video. If you have any kind of a comment or a question in regard to this video, a Reolink integration or how you can do some stuff inside your Home Assistant with your Reolink cameras, you can always leave a comment down in the comment section below. But if you want faster response, I encourage you to go to the Discord server and leave your comment there. If you did like this video, don't forget to give me a like, because it really does mean a lot and it really affects the YouTube algorithms. If you still haven't subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you get notified on the future video updates and streams. And before I wrap up this video, I really would like to thank everybody who is supporting me and has become a YouTube channel member. Thank you all for all of your support. And also thanks to each and every one of you that watched, liked or subscribed to my channel. If you too want to support the channel, you can become YouTube channel member. Thank you. And I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.